Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So Meta just released another model, and I know it seems like Meta's released dozens of models over the last week, but I think this one is one of the more important ones. So different from Code Llama, this is a model called Code Tracker. Pretty much what this does is it actually extracts motion elements and inertial elements from video. And the video doesn't actually have to be taken in a certain way or taken in a certain lighting. You can give any kind of video to this and basically this model will provide methods for motion tracking that either estimate jointly the instantaneous motion of all points in a given frame using optical flow or track the motion of individual points or subjects throughout the video, but independently, so not actually having to do one at a time. The latter, I think, is even more powerful for deep learning models that can track points through occlusions. So that's like behind trees or behind parts of an object you can't really see too well. And tracking points individually ignores the strong correlation that can exist between the points. For instance, when they arise from the same physical object, which previously would harm performance because we, were, we would just try to, you know, brute force the heck out of this to get it working. And why I think this model is really interesting is, yes, it's open source. Yes, clearly this probably took a lot of money and manpower from Meta to build. But I think there's something much more interesting, strategic, and in some cases sinister about this model. So let's get into it. So on the surface, yeah, you know, there's some cool videos of people doing sports, jumping horses, doing any number of things where you can use a video to extract information. And my theory with this is this is probably more work that Meta was highly invested in for their metaverse projects, which have now all basically failed. And now they're just turning this into something that actually can give value now. Why I say this is adversarial is um, I think this model does a number of things for Meta. So one, it degrades Google's and OpenAI's ability to actually monetize. So this means that if you, there's any content on the internet, basically right now it's being used by someone's company to train AI or train a model of some kind. That alone is worth gold because tech is not a blue ocean anymore neither from a market opportunity nor from an investor perspective. So your competitor's loss is your gain and they can't use money they don't make to mount attacks to disclose customers, investors, or mindshare from you. So yeah, Meta in a sense is weaponizing these open source models to their advantage, I don't blame them, to hurt their competitors. Secondly, uh, it's all about commodities in AI. So Zuckerberg believes that his platforms ultimately will benefit if there's more content because his platforms sell the ability to show your content over the rest for money. Just as with news or mobile games, driving the value of your content lower and lower by fostering creation or supply of more is actually good for Facebook and bad for you. Uh, and now it's even better for Facebook because they have more data rich with information to train their models on, which in theory means that eventually their models will be made faster and better than competitors. Third, it reinforces the investor narrative that the company has a future because AI. Uh, this is important because by now, consensus is that ads future is under pressure of market saturation. Um, Google is probably the biggest player that's worried about this because their entire business is ads. They've built their business on, on decades of ads and uh, it's a wildly profitable way to make money. Then there comes regulation, competition, um, Apple's ability to hurt meta at will, Amazon's increasing ads monetization. And um, there's more than one company that needs that narrative to land but combined with hurting Google, this is pretty good for a company that didn't have a generative AI strategy up until pretty recently. And especially coming from one that was betting on the metaverse, which clearly now nobody is really interested in. Lastly, it captures open source momentum behind your limited internal efforts. So we were all pretty surprised when Llama 2 was released. Uh, Llama, when it was first released, was not competitive. Uh, it was easily a year behind Google's AI and far further behind OpenAI's efforts with ChatGPT but being the first to capture thousands of capable contributors was key. We can still disagree whether or not you think that uh, Llama was leaked in intentionally or by accident, but uh, just a few months later, uh, it's clear that Meta is one of the most efficient and scalable producers of these open source LLM systems, and they're already incorporating many other innovations days after the paper was released. Um, open models alone without their foundational model would have tugged along for a while before reaching this state. And what I think is really fascinating about this whole situation is how it shuffles the big tech positioning, right? So Meta and Apple purely on a personal leadership basis are hating each other's guts because Apple and Meta need Google and OpenAI to fail for a number of reasons for them to be more successful. And I think it's really interesting that Apple is now kind of trading spots with Meta and that they're now hugely bullish on VR, uh, both in terms of hardware, software, and just vertical integration. 
And, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see um, as AI and the VR space merge closer and closer, because with, with things like nerfs and um, geospatial plating, the kind of 3D realm and generative 3D realm has weirdly caught up uh, and leapfrogged in a really curious way. I think this model is just, again, really interesting because it just it is a clear signaling indicator of what these big tech companies actually want to do. And at a high level, it's really just all about mindshare. It's all about how many developers can we get looking at this? How many AI researchers can we get thinking that Meta is creating the best foundational platforms? And then tooling on top comes and you can see where the kind of the snowball starts to form. And in my opinion, the biggest hurdle for Meta so far is that um, right now they, they commoditize content, right? They get content made by users and they sell it. Where Meta basically runs on uh, UGC or user generated content. So making it easy and cheap to make this content um, programmatically just with AI is sort of in their best interest, right? Like if you can reduce the cost of making um, a billboard quality song or make it so anyone with a really crappy camera can end up with uh, an MKBHD video level video, that would be kind of crazy, right? Because then you'd further increase content, you'd increase the quality of content, and then more eyeballs what you're looking at. And ideally, this model here, gauging motion, which you could roughly map to engagement or interest, right, in terms of metrics, might be a part of it. So let's jump into what this model is. I've linked to their uh, demo page. And what's cool is the, the paper, code, and demo is all available right now. So we don't actually have to wait for code. Uh, and the demo is actually using a real implementation, not just an interpretation from the paper itself. So they show a number of concepts here. Uh, they're kind of uh, these point clouds. They show points on a uniform grid, which is much more useful for sort of perceptual forms of interpolation when it comes to point tracking and video. Basically meaning you're tracking multiple points on a single subject to understand how that subject is changing in terms of depth. Basically what they show here is that CoTracker is just much better at this and has a much better temporal understanding of, of interactions with these. And when it comes to individual points, they say we track the same queried point with different methods and visualize its trajectory using color encoding based on time. The red cross indicates the ground truth point and they show here how much better their model is than uh, prior versions. So you can see with TapNet, it's just all over the place. Pips get a bit better. Raft is getting close, but it still has a lot of trouble um, when you have a lot of depth uh, with subject movement. And uh, yeah, CoTracker is basically perfect every time. So again, it shows that these AI tools are just much better at understanding what they're looking at, which is really a big part of the problem space with these models. So I'm gonna take a look at the demo now. I'm curious to see what this will be. So I tried uploading this video of uh, Wall Street apes from Pika Labs. Curious here is it looks like it just tracked the camera position, which is kind of cool. Um, so there's a lot of subject movement going on. There's some depth and some smoke. And uh, it's not very exciting, but it clearly tracks the positioning of the camera relative to all this. Now I'm gonna, and now I'm gonna try this video of a bear that they provide as a preset. And let's see what this looks like. So as you can see, now we're tracking both the subject of the bear and the camera frame itself, which is kind of cool because prior, like in college I worked on some models like this and it was always really hard to in one model uh, track both the kind of scene itself and the subject and Clearly this model, uh, which I'm sure is leveraging some other multimodal aspects that we've seen from Meta before in prior models. But again, you can clearly understand what's moving, uh, although the camera is moving itself, um, also understanding what the subject is. So this is another awesome project from Meta. It's really, really cool to see them getting very aggressive with capturing developer mindshare and, and just market share in general here. Um, you know, this was not something I think we all expected. Obviously, a lot of the metaverse and NFT stuff was kind of hilarious. But uh, yeah, clearly Meta is incredibly serious about open source LLMs and foundational models. And I think it'll be really cool to see, you know, how their competition stacks up with OpenAI, uh, with the momentum they're gaining. And um, yeah, so I've, as always, I hope you learned something from this video. If you like our content, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.